HDS. So the first project we're going to uh, hear about is the Cross eHealth project. Um, it, I've heard it called uh, many names, XEHealth, Cross eHealth. Um, we'll, we'll, hear we'll, we'll hear from the people what it's actually called. Um, there's three speakers on, the, on, the, on deck this morning. We've got Yasmin Fonseca who's for, with SPMS. We've got um, Hinek, very difficult name there, Krusik, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Marcello Mel uh, Melgara, who's um, uh, known approximately, I think, by everybody uh, who has ever dealt with the European project. So um, without further ado, I give the floor to uh, Marcello, uh, I think, to start off. Uh, so to Yasmin to start off. Uh, I would like to start by um, thanking IHE for the opportunity to represent uh, XE Health. XE Health uh, started on 2019, however, due to the pandemic, COVID pandemic, we only have been able to work online. And this is the fewer opportunities that we have to represent the um, project face to face. And so, um, moving on, uh, my name is Yasmin Fonseca. Uh, I work for SPMS. SPMS is the Portuguese National Competent Authority for Digital Health. I work as an international uh, e-health project manager. And for today's presentation, we will, I will provide you a brief overview of the project, uh, speaking a little bit ab more about the project scope, objectives, and uh, how the technical work it is being conducted within, within the XE Health work packages. Following my presentation, we will have Marcello Melgara's presentation on XE Health, a bridge towards evolution, where we will focus on where we will be from wave seven onwards. And uh, following Marcello, we will we'll have Hine Krusik, a uh, presentation on XE Health outcomes for broader use with a focus on information models, CDA, and fire profiles. Moving on. So uh, just to provide you a little bit of a background, XE Health strives to significantly uh, contribute and support a common uh, health, uh, health data, a European health data space where um, electronic health records can be exchanged in an interoperable, secure and cross-border format. And so we aim to contribute to this um, health market, to the European health, uh, health market uh, in alignment with these three based pillars uh, by allowing citizens secure access to their health data also across borders, uh, enabling personalized medicine through a shared European data infrastructure and also empowering citizens with digital tools for user feedback and person-centered care. And so XE Health actually proposes to lay the groundwork for a common framework for medical imaging, hospital discharge reports, laboratory results, and rare disease information to flow both alongside citizens' care pathway and across health entities between EU member states and neighbor countries. And so we aim to do this by, on a more technical level, by uh, developing specifications to improve um, and expand the services of My Health at EU. For those who don't know, My Health at EU is also known as the HDSI, and under the new released um, proposal for the regulation of the European health data space, this uh, infrastructure will be the European infrastructure for the primary use of health data. And so um, the tools developed by My Health at EU will actually act as resources for member states to be able to um, exchange electronic health records on a cross-border manner. And um, XE Health is not only aiming to improve and expand the services on an operational level, but we also aim to improve uh, these services and infrastructure on a governance level. We will not only uh, define, specify and demonstrate the EHR exchange format use cases, but we will also elaborate on the roadmap for the, for the use case for future uptake on the, the, on the EHDSI, also known as My Health at EU. And we also submit the outcomes and recommendations of XE Health regarding the EHR exchange format and propose a sustainable governance framework for this, infrastru for this infrastructure. Uh, I will not go uh, on deep uh, onto the expected impacts. We can all, you can also um, see this information on our website. For the sake of time, I'll just go to the interesting parts. 
And so um, as Axie Health is composed by eight work packages and all of the eight work packages contribute for the achievement of Axie Health objectives and expected impacts. However, the core technical work, and I can say the most interesting work for you, uh, it is comprised into three different work packages. The first work, packages is, the first work package is work package five, which focuses on defining functional specifications. And these functional specifications actually reflect what is needed from healthcare providers and professionals in terms of uh, clinical and business requirements for us to be able to deploy the services that we want to deploy. And these functional specifications will actually act as the foundation for the technical work of Axie Health. Since then, we will have work package six that will focus on what is available in terms of the um, standards and profiles to specify how to technically implement the use cases selected by work package five. And then uh, we will move on into our final technical work package. Which, which is work package seven and focus what is on what is implementable in terms of the specifications, both functional and technical, that were developed by work package five and six to be able to create a coherent and concrete uh, common architecture for the EHR exchange format domains across the EU and also for us to being able to integrate the new plan domains with the current cross-border services, which are the e-prescription and e-dispensation and also the patient summary. Uh, my presentation will end here. I'm just, um, I just did a brief overview of the project. We, I will now pass the floor to Marcello Melgara and later on the presentation we will see on more detail what these uh, work packages are trying to do on a more technical level. Great to go. Great. Work. Yes. So, uh, thank you. I think some of you, many of you were already in my, in our uh, presentation yesterday. How many of you were yesterday in that meeting? Okay, so I have to repeat something. Okay, so here is really to, it doesn't work. Where should I point? Oh, here. Okay, these are the basic pillar on which we established uh, cross-border interoperability since uh, mid of uh, I don't I don't remember since that's so the first point is patient safety patient safety is one of the pillar on which we have to build everything and patient safety of course is even more important than patient <laughs> privacy because you can infringe privacy but if you kill your patient uh, you have lost the other point is the trust and the trust is one of the pillar because when I send a document to another country, I want to be sure that that document is treated in the correct way and used in the correct way. When I ask a document from another health system from another country, I must be sure that all what is in the document is correct, updated, and trusted as a content. And of course, we are not infringing any specific law. So we have to develop common policies, co adopt common international standards, otherwise I write in Italian and you will, should read in your own language, and a common validation process. And since we are here at the Connectaton, in yesterday's presentation I recall that in Epsos we're starting with a young baby called Gazelle from Aichi, and together we make it growing and become a system, become a platform, because Oh, it is an important message on which I slow down. We can build marvelous software, we can build marvelous system, but if we cannot rely on the correctness of everything, we have nothing in our hands. So, Connectaton, uh, Aichi, Gazelle, Conformance are keywords. Without that, we are just exchanging pictures I took in, in, at a restaurant, nothing else. But remember, in order to respect this pillar, we, know, we need absolutely to be sure. I, I come from the integrated circuit world. For us, testing was defining a coverage. You remember, say, maybe some of you know what is a stacket, And we say, oh, we're covering 99.9% uh, .9 of. Here, we are covering some use cases. And uh, sorry if I take a little long, to advertise 
what we are doing here, what we did in the pre previous Connectathon. And it is extremely important. I'm very happy that every year we are joining again and building together what is happening downstairs, certifying our implementation, our system, our service. This is for our patient, remember. It's if this is for our physician. It's not just to have another medal. Sorry. And then we need political strategy in order to, I think you are like my statement, okay. <laughs> okay, now I can go on. <laughs> I don't. So uh, maybe I will go click, 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 and click uh, to say, oh, it is a long path. We started a uh, long time ago with patient summary prescription, then there was the directive from cross border, then we consolidated, when we expanded, then we entered in the, uh, 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 he health, uh, European health data space uh, for the exchange of the European patient summary and the prescription. And now we are in operation also with the original clinical document. Now we're working in the new domain with cross health for the domain of images, lab report, hospital discharge letter, rare disease, and on the Unicom side that will be presented later by, uh, by Christian on the adoption of the ISO IDMP standard in the normal life, not just in by the standard bodies or some, someone working on that part. And then there is this longer term evolution in which new projects have been start, will start soon, but a project on patient access. We have already patient access at access time. We need to empower our patients, so we must give them access to the document. Uh, potential is the a brand new large scale pilot in which we're trying to put together EIDAS uh, uh, digital identity and e prescription in the wallet. So, this is another new situation. And another big message and strong message is that the Commission has funded the, the license for SNOMED because we need a common terminology. Uh, SNOMED is able to, maybe yes, maybe no, not all the member states are going in that direction, but there is a strong political message from the Commission that we need to adopt standard terminologies. And uh, the new joint action in order to support the creation of the, the new guideline. And then there is what has been already mentioned and announced, uh, the regulation that of course puts some uh, constraint, opens some opportunity because uh, if we can continue dreaming and flying as butterfly will not come to a solid implementation and this is very important for our vendor because if we continue dreaming in project uh, they will be desperate in following us with practical implementation to be put on the market as tested product so we need a serious approach a serious roadmap with serious timing and what else in this presentation relevant for ah, okay this is the picture of our reality in my FATU, you can count how many member states will are joining are in operation and will join. Sorry, there is something. Okay, this is a, a short history when it started. CrossF started from the recommendation from the Commission of uh, opening to new domain uh, the cross-border exchange, so not just uh, the patient summary and the prescription, but to introduce uh, image, to introduce lab report, to introduce uh, hospital discharge letter. I don't know why it doesn't work. Where I to put the point to make it easier? Can you help me where? Because I'm clicking, oh, it's coming. Okay, so the two projects I was mentioning before were created. I, I think uh, I need, uh, <laughs> Have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what we. Oh. Okay. The point is that in uh, Cross Health, we are developing the specification. And what we have done and we are doing now is to take those specifications and make them a reality in my health ITU through change proposals. So, there are several people I'm looking out to, Aspen Man and many friends working in strict conjunction with my health at EU solution provider to prepare the change proposal. That means that by the end of September, uh, it will be proposed to introduce in the normal services of my health at EU, hospital discharge report, lab report, 
image report and also enhancement of the patient summary in order to provide additional data for rare diseases. Uh, sorry, please, <laughs> I, I'm continuous clicking. I don't know where I have to put. Uh, okay, ah, and okay. I don't want to go in detail. Uh, we have extension, we have evolution, but the concept is we are all working in order to, these slides will be made available of you, for you, of course. And uh, extension in few words is we are reusing the current asset in uh, my FTU to exchange a new document with the same paradigm. In the evolution, we are really thinking to something more complex. So for the time being, the process is, I am a patient from Italy, I am in Paris, so the health professional taking care of me can retrieve my document. We can also think to other situation in which my documents are sent for a second opinion to expert elsewhere, and this is an evolution. We can ask, uh, we can uh, think to be hospitalized abroad, and the documents are returned to my electronic health record in Italy and made in ours. But this requires evolutionary, uh, legal, technical, uh, and so on, and even exchange image study will require evolution because it is a very complex process to be fulfilled. Now I leave uh, to enter into the detail, but the, my clear message in two words, do a lot, test everything and work in order to make the life of your patient and your health professional better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to some of the outcomes of the project, Crossy Health project. They are all perfect, of course, but some are of the type that we hope that they deserve uh, to survive the end of the project, let's say, and that we hope uh, could be used uh, for the improvement of the interoperability, not only inside the Crossy Health project, not on only inside European context, but some also in the, let's say, global context. Uh, here, once again, the, the slide that presents uh, our approach. We felt the need to uh, create sort of logical information models as a basis for uh, collection of the knowledge of the clinicians and expression of their needs. So those are technology and, uh, let's say, standards, independent uh, expression of uh, information needs uh, in a particular domains. That model at this moment uh, covers uh, quite well, I believe, uh, the whole area uh, that Crossy Health Project dealt with, uh, the four domains, and actually has started uh, or is based on the uh, previous work uh, which has been done by Nictis, by Netherlands colleagues uh, on their so-called healthcare information models. Uh, that specifications had been, of course, completed with the functional text, the, the text of the functional description uh, requirements, and then transformed, transformed through the VP6 uh, into, let's say, implementable specifications. Uh, we started with the HL7 CDA specification, which was, which was the target of our work. But uh, after presentation of the uh, interim results to a community of users, we got quite strong feedback that actually that's fine, but it's not so much interested in the, for the future. And everyone was asking for the fire specifications. That's why in the last months of the project, we started building at least an examples of our implementation guidelines. And we started for laboratories, uh, not surprisingly, because uh, for the laboratories, uh, well, the domain is uh, relatively well standardized from the information point of view. Uh, and we had uh, good sources to take to start with. Uh, that's the XDLAB profile. But even in that profile, uh, we found some limitations. That profile has been specified some 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, so we 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 felt the need to uh, make some modifications. And thanks to the links that we have through uh, Jürgen Brechtetter, for example, uh, we started talking with uh, with IHE with the uh, Palm Committee and propose a few changes, uh, also inspired by the advances in, in Firebird, of course. 
uh, as an example, for example, we, we, we felt the need to express the status of the result. So the document status is always final, but the result status of the laboratory report could be preliminary. So some of the findings uh, has not been yet completed, et cetera, et cetera. So that fell, uh, that left, uh, led to the uh, continuous collaboration and, and hopefully to the change of the international standard. In the case of FIRE, uh, we started working with Giorgio Cagnoli, who you know all, and actually had some first uh, uh, drafts of the specification also on, uh, online. Uh, BP7, as has been reported, uh, contributed towards the change proposals for the My Health at EU project, and uh, that was rather successful, the change proposal Oh, three minutes, four minutes, thank you. I, I will speed up a bit. <laughs> um, so, just some drawings to give you some flavor of how the, the model looks like. Um, not moving forward. Anyway, in the first slide, ah. it was within seven hours and 30 minutes, so you have time. So, I have three <laughs> minutes, 30 still left. Well, you can you can see the, the type of modeling or the, the methodology that we used. We specified all the data elements. We linked them to another model, to uh, internal links inside uh, the repository. Uh, we are using uh, UML language uh, to express uh, the model. Uh, my, my opinion was that we are building something that would ease the communication with clinicians, but. Uh, Actually, it was, it's it's not true, because as once they see this, uh, they just stop listening. Uh, that's a different world. So we had to present it in in Excel and and in uh, visio diagrams. Then, but the message has been given. Okay, uh, not only the modeling part was important for Cosi Health, also uh, the unification or well the effort to find a common coding systems. As you know, in Europe, we are using many different languages. So that's why the coding and harmonization of the coding across different member states are key. Uh, until we will have some AI that would be able to translate the free text, which is far still. So we, we spent quite a lot of work. Um, and uh, thanks to the fact that uh, we had access to the ex experts in the field of laboratory from several countries, we were able to at least uh, create draft proposals of the value sets in laboratory domains. Uh, you can see that uh, we based our recommendation on SNOMED and we are proposing to use SNOMED for the coding organisms, substances, evaluation findings, prison findings and different other types of coded laboratory test results. And uh, also for the laboratory techniques, for example, because in order to be able to compare results from two laboratories, you do not need to know only what kind of test has been done, but also how. So what if it's uh, I don't, photometry or something, something else. That all of the, well, deals with the proper interpretation of the measured results. So that's uh, the parts that we hope uh, would be uh, uh, would uh, would be uh, handed over by European uh, working groups, uh, and we are working together with EHN subgroup on semantics as well as uh, EHN subgroup on technical interoperability, where those uh, artifacts and results hopefully will be further utilized and presented. Uh, finally, I would like to show you. Just a few links, if it will work. Ah, yeah. Uh, first, uh, let's say, uh, result is that the EHN adopted uh, the EHN guidelines for laboratory uh, exchange of laboratory result reports, which are based on the work on cross hills that has been adopted. And that's the first step towards the implementation in my health CTU project. Ah, yeah. And here you can see the links for the Articore and FIRE specifications in, uh, in the field of laboratory. And also somewhere uh, was the link to the model. Unfortunately, it has disappeared somewhere. 
on the previous slides. Later, well, we can provide the, the link if, if necessary for those who will be interested. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you all for the interesting insights.